Hey there! So you want to know how to master a two-handed weapon? As you can see from this shitty animation, I've got a pretty functional rig for you. Let's see how it's done. First, let's create a bone and name it root. Place it somewhere in the middle of the handle. This will be our main controller of the rig and the pivot point of its rotation. Then, duplicate the root bone and scale it to the top of your weapon. Name it deformer and connect it to the root one. This is the bone that we attach the weapon to and use to slide the pivot point. Then, add another bone, move it up and scale it down. This will be one of the anchors for character hands. After naming the bone duplicate it and move to the opposite side of the handle. Select both of them and connect to the deformer bone. Lastly, duplicate both anchors and scale them down. These two bones will be slots that we attach characters' hands to. These intermediate bones will make connection to the handle not so strict. Oh, and don't forget to parent each of them to the corresponding anchor bone. In the pose mode change bone shapes to ones that you feel appropriate. But I recommend to keep the root one relatively big for easy selection. So we have two slot bones that we pin character hands to. They are connected to two anchor bones that we use to slide and rotate pin hands. These two are connected to the deformer that we attach hammer to and use to slide the pivot point. And lastly, this bone is connected to the root one that we use as the rig main controller. Now let's quickly add bone constraints. The root one does not have any, so we move down the hierarchy. Deformer had limit location at local space leaving only Y axis. This will prevent it from moving away from the root. But if you need to rotate your weapon not only around handle, like for example axe or scythe, you can ignore this constraint. Both anchors have the same limit location constraint, as we want them only to slide along the handle. Slots on the other hand are completely free, as we want them to be flexible enough to position hands for any situation. Now, when our hammer rig is ready, let's move to the hands. In the edit mode duplicate your IK bone and scale it down. Name it something like handcuff, and then, parent original IK bone to this one. Give it another shape, and check if everything works fine. Then, select both hammer and character armatures, and go to the pose mode. First select slot bone and then appropriate handcuff bone. Press Ctrl Shift C and choose copy location. Leave it at world space. Then repeat for the copy rotation. World space as well. After that repeat the process for another slot bone in this hand, so you end up with four constraints for the handcuff bone. Lastly, add limit scale constraint and drag it to the top. Enable everything, switch to local space, and set minimum to 0.8 and maximum to 1.2. Once constraints are in place, go to edit mode, select both bones and click symmetrize. Now we need to control the snapping with drivers. Go back to the pose mode and add driver for the first copy location constraint. Set target to the character armature, this handcuff bone. Type to average scale, space to local. In the expression type 1 minus var, times 5. Copy this driver and paste into the copy rotation constraint. Then copy to the second copy location constraint, but this time change expression in brackets to var minus 1. Copy edited constraint and paste it into second copy rotation 1. Now when you scale this bone down, it copies transform of one slot, and when it's scaled up it moves to another one. When the scale is 1, the bone is detached. Then, copy driver from the first copy location constraint and paste it into second copy location and rotation constraints of another handcuff bone. 
Then, copy driver from the second constraint of the first bone, and paste into first constraints of the second bone. This way the snapping will be mirrored, and same scaling will pin them to opposite slots. Now when the rig is ready, let's see how to use it, as for the sake of flexibility it lacks automation, like other similar ones. So first how to slide pivot point. Select both root and deformer and add location keyframe. Move one key forward or backward. Direction depends on what looks better in your exact case, but the shift should be exactly one frame. Then move root along Y axis to where you want it to be. Copy value from the move menu. Next select deformer and press G, Y, minus, Control V, Enter. Add location keys to both bones and you've got seamless transition. Now you can rotate hammer around new point. I do not recommend sliding bones during more than one frame, unless the smooth transformation is what you want in a particular situation. Now how to seamlessly attach and detach hands and avoid this jiggling. You can either use an add-in for 10 bucks, or utilize a free little trick. Firstly, animate your hands so it looks good at the moment of contact. Then select handcuff bone, and after that, the corresponding slot bone. Press Ctrl Shift C, and add copy transformation constraint. Go to the slot bone and apply the constraint. Then, don't forget to add location and rotation keyframes. Now you can return to the handcuff bone and animate it snapping. This time smoothness of the transition is not as strict. To detach a hand you do the opposite. Firstly, you animate snapping. Then go to the frame, where constraints are completely disabled and copy slot transforms to the handcuff bone. You can play with the transformation and snapping keyframes to achieve proper result. As you can see here, in my case snapping works better with one frame transition. This is because my hand and hammer movement are not aligned. But you can also fix this by aligning them with the same copy transformation constraint at the first frame. The rig is pretty flexible and it's up to you how to use it. As always, good luck with your art.